Hi and welcome to the 5 in 15. So my name is Gillian. I'm a journalist living in Dublin and this is my new series where I look at major stories currently happening in the news today from the perspective of the questions that I personally would like to ask about those said stories. So this idea was inspired by the fact that I quite often find news stories due to word count or bulletin length assume a certain amount of prior knowledge which to be honest I just don't always know about unfortunately. So, here I ask five questions I personally would like to know more about, research them from credible sources and answer them in 15 minutes, hence the name The Five in Fifteen. In this first episode, I look at the hijacking of Ryanair Flight 4978 flying from Greece to Lithuania and the detention of journalist Roman Protasevich by Belarusian authorities on Sunday 23rd of May. 2021. Okay, so question one is what is currently happening in Belarus? So it's going to help to give a little bit of context on the geography on this. So going to head straight to Wikipedia. So Belarus is a landlocked country in Eastern Europe. It's bordered to Russia to the east and northeast, Ukraine to the south, Poland to the west and Lithuania and Latvia to the northwest. It's got a population of 9.4 million and Minsk is the capital and largest city. It's also going to be necessary to have a quick look into the recent history of Belarus. So Professor Andrew Wilson writing in The Guardian states that in 2005 Belarus was dubbed the last true dictatorship in the heart of Europe by Condoleezza Rice, who was then the US Secretary of State. So, ruling Belarus for the past 27 years, President Alexander Lukashenko has, according to Wilson, rigged every election since 1994. The EU first imposed sanctions on Belarus in 2004, strengthening them on Lukashenko and his associates in 2011. RTE's Fiona Mitchell has also reported that Lukashenko disbanded the parliament then in 1996 and he handpicked replacements for those he had ejected. Fiona Mitchell also quotes from Professor Andrew Wilson, who said that apart from coercion and serial election stealing, the president's position was also helped by a relatively strong economy in the 1990s and 2000s, prior, of course, to the global economic crash of 2008. So what was Lukashenko actually like. Well, according to Wilson, the fruits of those relatively good economic years were widely shared. And although it's not true to say that there wasn't corruption, according to Wilson, there hasn't been the same kind of oligarchy or mafia skimming off most of the money. It actually went to support an old-fashioned Soviet-style economy of big state factories and state employment. However, in the last decade, this has run into problems. The Belarus economy has faltered, unable to depend on its neighbour Russia for the level of financial support it once offered. Indeed, according to businessinsider.com, Russian President Vladimir Putin has traditionally been a strong ally of the Belarusian leader even extending a $1.5 billion loan to Belarus in 2020 as a gesture of support and volunteering aid from the Russian police during the protests. So what about these protests? How severe and serious were they? So in another Guardian editorial, we're told the protest movement that is threatened the survival of his regime after fraudulent 2020 elections has, for the time being, been subjugated. A combination of state violence, media suppression, incarceration and torture has battered a people into temporary submission. 
the modest sanctions imposed by the european union and the united states have had limited effect while deepening the dependency of europe's last dictator as he's known on vladimir putin's largesse and goodwill okay so that brings us on then to question two which is what had the journalist Roman Protasevich said? Or to phrase this question differently, why did he end up in the situation he did? Now, before I go on any further, I would just like to say that I did Google the pronunciation of that, so I hope I got it right. If not, please comment down below. I hope I didn't mess it up too badly. So, Roman Protasevich, 26, was until November editor of the opposition Nekta channel on Telegram, founded by fellow dissident Stepan Putilo. So Telegram is actually a secure messaging app for smartphones and that was actually one of the very few ways that Belarusian dissidents have been able to organise as the authorities have cracked down hard on independent media. They've been blocking opposition websites during last year's massive protests. So Nekta Live, which means somebody in Belarusian, now has more subscribers than the Nekta channel. Nekta Live's posts included crowdsourced photos and videos of police brutality. They also informed people about opposition rallies and strikes. So actually, Mr. Protasevich now works for a different telegram channel, Bella Mova. He stepped in to write for it after blogger I've Igor Losik was arrested by the Belarusian authorities in June of last year. At the height of the protest last August, Nekta was getting hundreds of messages an hour from citizen journalists, according to Protasevic speaking to the BBC. When asked by BBC Russian if Nekta was a protest hub or a media outlet, Protasevic said, It is hard to say who we are. I guess we are primarily Belarusians who would like to come home and live in a free country without dictatorship. He left Belarus in 2019 actually and in January 2020 he applied for Polish citizenship. His parents also moved to join him in Poland last August. His father Dmitry is an army reserve officer who lectured in ideology at a Belarusian military academy. Roman's own protest activities actually go back to 2011 when he was a teenager. It's reported by the BBC that he was actually expelled as a teenager from school for taking part in a protest against Lukashenko. So what are the charges that he is actually facing? Well, they are, you'll not be surprised to hear, extremely serious. So, Protasevich and Stepan Putillo, who calls himself Stepan Svetlov, were put on Belarus's list of individuals involved in terrorist activity, that's the direct mm -hmm. quote, last year. The charge of causing mass unrest can be punished by up to 15 years in jail. Okay, and that brings us on then to question three, which is what happened on board the Ryanair flight? So we're gonna to head to News Talk here and they have some quotes from Michael O'Leary, boss of Ryanair. We do love Michael O'Leary for some media quotes here in Ireland. He can always be counted on to come out with some memorable um, expressions but in this case of course the topic is considerably more serious than the usual fare. Okay so Michael O'Leary says the forced diversion of the Ryanair flight to Belarus was a state-sponsored hijacking. 
The CEO said it appears authorities removed a journalist and his travelling companion from the plane, while the company also believes that there were some KGB agents on board the flight. The plane, which was flying from Greece to Lithuania, was escorted by a Belarusian fighter jet after reports it had explosives on board, but none were actually found. It was forced to divert from to Minsk, where an opposition blogger, Roman Protasevich, was arrested. Mr. O'Leary said the incident was very frightening for passengers and crews as they were held under armed guard and had their bags searched. The air traffic controller had actually recommended the flight divert to Minsk and at 9.47 a.m. according to the Telegraph, the pilot declared a May Day and changed course for Minsk. Pilots are actually obliged to follow such instructions in the case of a bomb threat or interception. An aviation expert said he had very little choice but to comply. So obviously this was an extremely scary situation for all the passengers, but one would imagine particularly so for the journalist Roman Protasevich. A passenger on board the flight Monica Simkien, I'm apologizing for the pronunciation, said that as the flight was diverted to Minsk, she saw Protasevich panicking. He just turned to people and said he was facing the death penalty, she told the AFP news agency. His girlfriend, Sophia Sapega, 23, was also arrested after the plane landed in Minsk. She is a Russian citizen and a law student at the European Humanities University in Lithuania. And that leads us on to question four, which is, where is Roman Protasevich now? So it's currently late at night on Wednesday 6th of pardon me, Wednesday the 26th of May when I'm recording this and to the best of my knowledge, Protasevich and his girlfriend Sofia Sapega are still detained in Belarus. On Tuesday evening, a video featuring Sapega was released. Reading a memorised text, apparently under duress, she confessed to editing a telegram channel that releases personal information about, or in other words, doxes, Belarusian police officers and other security agents. The video indicates that Belarus may plan to threaten Sepega, who is not known to have played a serious role in last year's protests, with years in prison. Her lawyer told the BBC's Russian service that she was being held at a KGB detention centre for two months as a preventative measure. From their new home in Poland, Roman's mother told Agents France Press, I'm asking, I'm begging, I'm calling on the whole international community to save him. They're going to kill him in there. Her husband said their lawyer was turned down from seeing Roman. One of the ways our authorities torture us is by not telling relatives where their loved ones are being held until the last minute. Roman's former girlfriend and colleague, I'm sorry I can't pronounce her name, told the Daily, Dele Daily Telegraph his nose is deformed, it was clearly broken, noticing that his right cheek was also puffed up as if he had lost a tooth. Roman also released a video, which is the one she's referring about there, saying um, that he had been responsible for organising riots, which his father actually said he that's something he wouldn't be able to confess to because he simply didn't do it. And in today's paper, it states that Protasevich had been missing for more than 24 hours before Belarusian media on Monday evening ran reports that he was in hospital in Minsk. A pro-government channel later published the video showing the 26-year-old in custody confessing to organising the riots. 
Okay, so final question five. What are the implications for international relations? EU leaders have promised fresh economic measures against Lukashenko's government as well as a flight ban on the national carrier Bolivia, the Guardian reports. On Tuesday, French President Emmanuel Macron said, Additional sanctions, will this be sufficient? I absolutely can't say today. He did also add, though, the unacceptable character of what happened justifies them. German Chancellor Angela Merkel said the video of Podesevic was worrying and disturbing and made the EU demand for his release all the more urgent. And we will use all channels at our disposal to do this, she said. Estonia's President Kirsty Kaljuleid urged the UK to take action to stop corrupt money siphoning through London's financial centre to Belarus. Foreign Affairs Minister for Ireland Simon Coveney has described it as aviation piracy that's state-sponsored. So, Alexander Lukashenko has actually since made his first public remarks. Unsurprisingly, he's defending his actions. He is accusing the West of launching a hybrid modern war against Minsk and calling the backlash over the incident a planned provocation. As mentioned earlier, European countries have begun to block flights from Minsk on Wednesday today following a decision by the European Commission to enact restrictions on the Belarusian national car carrier Bolivia. A Bolivia flight bound for Barcelona turned around at the Polish border and circled more than 10 times before returning to Minsk. Really the final word in this story has to go to Raman's mother. My son, this young man, just wanted to tell the truth about the situation. He didn't do anything wrong. I think really the fact that this was a Ryanair plane that was hijacked has made this story more pertinent within the Irish media because it does have that Irish connection. But really this should be a massive story everywhere because it's absolutely terrifying what has happened to this journalist for his freedom of expression and his right to live without fear. So it's actually a really scary story and I will definitely be following this. Anyhow, that is the end of this video. I hope you find it useful. I definitely learned more about this important story and I hope you did too. I hope to do more in this series. If you could, it would really, really help me out if you were able to either please comment, like, or subscribe, or do all three if you would really like. At the moment, I've got seven subscribers, and while I'm very grateful to them, I really need a little bit of help. So thank you very much for watching, and take care of yourselves, and I will be back shortly with another video I hope to do one every week. Thank you.